we are still on Docker. This time around, we want to look at automation, right? Automation with Jenkins. We'll be integrating Jenkins and Docker to allow us to do our build automatically without having to use the build server that we had earlier. But to make this happen, we want to set up a Jenkins server. On the Jenkins server, we are going to install Docker. Because we are going to install Docker, we are unable to use the existing Jenkins server that I had created some time ago because I'm unable to put Docker on it because the Docker I'm using is a community edition for practice, right? So for that reason, I'm launching an instance. Let's see, that's what I have open here. Okay, I have the deployment server open. So I'll be discarding the build server that I, I worked with earlier. Okay, so we're launching an instance. Let's call this, let's call this Ubuntu 4, Ubuntu for Jenkins. Jenkins. Okay. So, what else? Want to take Ubuntu? Keep it. Let me use the existing the existing keep here I have. Then I want to create a new security group. I want port 8080 opened here. So add security group rule. So I need to open port 8080, which will allow me access Jenkins from anywhere. I believe that's about all. So I want to launch my instance. So let's open the SSH client for this new server. Let's start a new session. So default username will be Ubuntu for Ubuntu server. I'm using the key pair that I selected. Okay. Okay, now this server there's not a Jenkins server yet until I install Jenkins in it. Where so is Jenkins? So I need to install Jenkins in this server. So let me have, <coughs> have an installation script, Jenkins installation on Ubuntu. So I'll use the script, but before I proceed to copy in it, let's just take a look at what we have there. Want to update software repositories and install Java. 
using these commands. Then we want to add the repository key to our system. That's the Jenkins repository key to my system. So I want to add the Debian package repository address to Jenkins.list. So that's with this command. I want to run this command to enable APT to use the new repository. I want to install Jenkins itself, right? Then I want to start Jenkins and check the status of Jenkins. So I want to ensure that the port 88 is open, okay, which we have done. So now that I'm satisfied with that, I want to copy this and via into a file, let's call this file Jenkins, Jenkins installation.sh. So Jenkins installation.sh. So I want to paste the script. Then escape column WQ to quit and to save and quit. So I want to run the script. Okay, so while that is running, let's look at the next script we need to install and let's discuss it while the installation is going on. So I also want to install Docker on Ubuntu for Jenkins server, okay? So here I want to do an update of the software repositories. I want to install Docker itself and check the version. I want to add Jenkins user to a group called Docker. Then finally, I want to restart Jenkins to enable this update that we had on line 15, take effect. Okay, so that's my Docker installation on that Jenkins server. So I can go ahead and, okay, still installing. almost completed. Okay, so we are up. So Q to quit. Now, I want to install Docker. So I want to call this file. I want to view into a file called Docker installation .sh. I want to paste the content that we have into it. This to install Docker, escape, column, WQ to save and quit. Okay, now that we've done it, I want to run this script as well. Docker installations.sh, okay. is we starting Jenkins. Okay, we start completed. Now that we've done this, we want to use the URL for the Jenkins server. Okay, we are done with this guy for now. So we want to Use this, right? This is Ubuntu for Jenkins. I want to access it on the web. 
to access Jenkins and the So that's port 8080, that's the default port for Jenkins. So I've been told that I have an initial admin password. So I want to copy this. To access it, I need to cut this file, right? So I come in here. I come in here. I want to cut the file. Okay, so sudo cut. Then I paste this. So this is the content. So that's the password. Then I need to come up here and paste this in. That's the admin password. So I want to install suggested plugins. Okay, so I want to create my first admin user. So let's use this guy. Let's set a password. Okay, so save and finish. I want to start using Jenkins now. Now that I'm in here, there are two first things I need to do, right? I need to bring in Maven, right? I don't want to install Maven on the on the terminal, right? So I want to install Maven here, and that's one thing. Now, the second thing is, you know, I have a deployment server. So I also want to install a plugin that will allow me SSH into the deployment server so that I can do my deployment in there. Right, because I'm trying to build a pipeline now. So I want to be able to install, deploy into the deployment server. So I need the SSH agent plugin. So two things, right? So let's go to manage Jenkins and get those over with before we start building our pipeline project. So manage Jenkins. I want to go to global tool configuration because I know Maven is there. So I can come in here and say, add Maven. Add Maven. So the latest version of Maven that is here is 3.8.6. I can come in here and type Maven 3.8.6. I can as well come here and say Maven, I use uppercase, but whatever I use here, I need to be consistent, right? If I'm going with uppercase, I should stick to uppercase. If I'm going with lowercase, I should stick with lowercase. So let me use lowercase. Okay. So what else do I need to do here? All I need to do is to, because it's automatic installation, apply and save. So I'm fine with that. 
So the next thing I want to do is to go to manage plugin and go to available plugin to search for a plugin called SSH agent, right? SSH agent. So I need this to be able to provide SSH credentials, right? For the other deployment server so that I can connect to it within the, within the uh, Jenkins pipeline. Okay, so I want to install without restart. So that's it, pending. So it's a success. So now that we've done this, we need to go to the main business of the day, okay? So what we want to do, we want to build a pipeline. So we can come to new item, okay? New item, we can say, uh, what pipeline are we trying to build? What name can we call it? We can call it, Um, Docker pipeline, something like that. We can just call it Docker pipeline, right? Docker. Okay, let's say okay. Docker pipeline. Okay, let's call it Docker pipeline. And want to do a pipeline project. So. Let me just go straight to my pipeline, okay? And let's look at the steps, the stages I want, okay? So the stages I want will include, uh, let's see, remember node, right? This is how we start the scripted pipeline, node, open the bracket, call the bracket and close it, then go in between, then let's start discussing the steps, right? The stages we want. So the first stage I want is that I want to do a stage. The first stage I want is to do a clone. Okay, let's say I want to do a clone. I want to do a clone. That's the stage I want to do here. So what do I need to do? I put my curly brackets, right? I put it here, open it and close it. Okay. I go to the next line. So what other stage do I want? Did I move twice? Okay. Next stage that I want. So let's say I want to do my Maven build, right? Now I've installed Maven. Yeah, I want to do a Maven build. Then I want to open my curly bracket after there and close it. Okay. Next time. So the next stage. The next stage, I want to do my image build from Docker. Okay. So something I've done is that I've added the Docker file that I used in the last session. I've added it to the web applic web application repository that we want to work with, okay? So I, I say, can open this, then I can say image build from Docker. Image build from Docker. So I can do this. Open my curly bracket and close it. Enter. So another stage that we want to look at is the next stage I want to look at is I want to, I can say I want to, I want to log in to, I want to log in, right? Remember, we log in stage. I can say I want to log in. Login to Docker, right? If I log into Docker, right, which was a step we did when we're doing it manually, right? We logged into Docker. 
So after logging into Docker, I can look at another stage as this, right? So I just want us to refresh our memory, right? After logging into Docker, I can, I can now do my push, right? I can do my push, Docker push, right? Image, image push, that's I'm pushing to Docker, image push to Docker, okay? So image push to Docker Hub. Let's say Docker Hub. So this is another stage, All right? So this will provide us the necessary guidance. So I would see what we're actually doing. So image push to Docker Hub, okay? So what else? What else we have? Stage. So the next stage you want to look at is to log into deployment server, right? To deployment server. That's something you want to do, right? To log into deployment server. Log into deployment server. So, so SSH2 deployment server. So once we are in deployment server, then we can run image in the deployment server, right? So let's see that. That's SSH2 deployment server. Then once we are there, one, two. Okay. Once we log into deployment server, we can choose to do our do our deployment, right? Run image. Run image in deployment server. Okay, so that we can do a pull it create and the start of the image, right? So I can have a container on the deployment server. Okay, so these are the steps we'll be looking at. And uh, since it's something we've done manually, we should be able to go over it using Jenkins, right? So these are the different stages that we, We've done. Okay. So let's see how we go about it. Okay. So now let's start with the first one. We want to do a clone. To do a clone, we need the GitHub account, right? Um, to see where we are cloning from. And to ensure that we do not go back and forth, we need to have a Docker file in here. Okay. So Let's look for what we are working with. So we are working with this, right? It has a Docker file in it, right? This is a Docker file that we had created for the last session. So we have it here. So that's the Docker file. So, so these are basically the three things we need to get going. Okay, so, so what do I need to do to do my clone? Okay, to do my clone, I need to come in here, enter, okay? Then I like to use the pipeline syntax. It makes my life easy. I come here, I want to look for checkouts, checkout from version control, that's from Git. I place the repository that I have. So if I scroll down, I see master here. I want to take it out because the branch I have is main, so there's no master, so I can afford to leave it blank. It says to assign main. Now, credentials, I don't have any for this, right? Because 
I'm using a public proposition, so it wouldn't even prompt me for one. But if I were to use a private repository, this is where I had credentials, okay? I select the kind of credentials I want, username and password. I put the username, whatever the username to your GitHub. Then the password that will be required is not the regular password, rather personal access token, okay? Then you can put the ID, whatever you want to use to identify this credential, maybe put GitHub, something, GitHub credential, whatever that you had. So since I'm not doing that, I just decided to use it to show what I'm doing, what, what I would have done, okay? So I generate pipeline scripts. So this pipeline script that I've generated, that's what the GitHub, I copy it and I come in here to the script, I paste it in there, okay? So the next step is Maven build, right? Now, because I did not uh, install Maven in my command line, right, in my terminal, right? So it means I'm using the Maven I have here. So what I need to do is to define the tool name that I'm using, okay? So I can come up here and do some definitions, right? Okay, I can define, I can say what I'm using is Maven, right? This is the name I want to call it. <coughs> I want to call it Maven, right? Space equal to space, right? Then I say two name is what I'm defining as Maven, right? Two name, two name. Then I come here and I say, column, space, then within here, I want to put that name exactly as, it, as I defined it up there. Remember I said Maven 3.8.6, right? So if you are just uppercase for yours, make sure you set it as uppercase here. It is important, it's in quote, right? So that's important. So. When I come in here, I want to say SH, right? Ordinarily, I would have said MVN, let's say clean package, right? Or clean install, whatever I wanted to use, right? I could have done this to do a build, right? Ordinarily. But because I'm using the tool that I installed in here, right? I need to go an extra mile, right? So what do I need to do? You see, this MVN will be found in the bin directory, right? Bin directory. Bin. Okay, so this is where I would have found it in the bin directory, right? Of whatever the tool name, okay? To be in the bin directory of the tool that we are using. So, and I've defined my tool name as Maven, right? This is what I want to call it. I can call it anything. I can come here and say my tool name, I want to call it Ademola anything, right? And go and say Ademola, right? Ademola. So I can say, I can say Maven, but I don't want it to be too long. I just want to illustrate this by Ademola, right? I can say this. I can call this my true name, right? So this could be anything, okay? So if I use this, I must come here and copy this exactly as it is, right? I must copy it exactly as it is. 
right? Copy this exactly as it is. And I come here and put it there. But I won't just put it here, right? Because I'm calling a command, right? So I must put dollar in front of it because it's now a variable. Dollar, put curly bracket here. I put curly bracket here, right? I put curly bracket here. I put curly bracket there. Okay, so now looks like what I want to see, okay? So once I do this, I believe this is fine. So I want to go to the next step, okay? So for the next step, what's happening here? I want to do a build, image build from Docker. And remember, we have our, we've set up our, our uh, what's it called? Docker file, right? Docker file is in here. You have a Docker file here. So what do I want to do? To do a build, right? Remember, put SH here, quotes, right? Then I want to say Docker build, right? I want to do Docker build, space, space, dash C, right? That's a tag. So let's look at my repository here. This is my, let's see, this guy here. This is my profile, right? So this is my username on Docker Hub, right? I want to copy that and paste in here, right? I'm trying to build an image from Docker, right? Then I say slash, right? I say slash. So what name do I want to call this now, for example? Let's say I want to call it uh, um, Docker, 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 Docker build, right? I can call it Docker build, right? That's the name I want to call it, the repository, Docker build, and see. That's the name I want to call the repository. This is the username. They want to call the repository, right? This name I want to call the build, then, which is the same as repository up there in Docker Hub. So if I come here, I want to say version, I could say version one. But the problem with this is if I say version one, anytime I do a build, right, it's going to be always version one, okay? If I do not want to put version one, if I want it to come up as, you know, build number, right? The current build number at every point in time. I can define a variable, right? I'll come up here again. I define a variable and say def variable. I want to define a variable. I, call, I can call it build number. Build number, number, okay? I can call it build number, okay? Build number equal to, right? Open quotation here and use the system defined variable for build number, build underscore number. So it's going to be in capital letters, capital, uppercase, right? So build number. So that's that's what I have here. So, so I've defined the variable. So instead of saying this, right? You know, I would have put a space here ordinarily and said dots, right? To, to show that it's from this present working directory that the Docker file that we are using is, right? So since this is what I have now, I can replace this one, right? Since I've defined build number, I can say dollar, right? Dollar, I open curly bracket, I close it. Then I go and copy this build number as it is exactly, right? I don't want mistakes. Let's copy it as it is exactly, build number, copy it and paste it here. 
so that it can come in, the build number can be generated and plugged in, okay? So what next can I do, right? So the next thing I want to do, right? After doing this build is that I want to push the build to Docker Hub, right? So that it can be pulled from the deployment server and deployed, right? So I want to, before I can do a push to Docker Hub, I must <laughs> log into Docker Hub for that to even happen, right? So I need to log in to Docker Hub, okay? So I come here, as usual, I want to enter, right? So to log into Docker Hub, to log into Docker Hub, I need to do the um, sh, I need to run this command, sh login, docker login, sh docker, docker login, right? sh docker login, I want to say this, dash u, right? Then I'll enter my username, which is tech dumb developers that I have here. That's my username for Docker Hub, right? Tech dumb developers, right? That's dash u, tech dumb developers. So dash p, dash p, then I enter my password. <laughs> I won't do that. Right? So what I want to do is that I want to use an application, right? To be able to make it a secret. That password, I want to make it a secret, okay? So I don't want it to appear as it would have appeared, okay? So what I'll do is that, let me go back to the pipeline syntax, okay? There is, something we can use to make it secret. Let's see. Let's check this out. Okay, let's see. There's this with credentials, okay? I get that, you know? So there's this with credentials. with credentials, to bind credentials to variables, okay? Variables is a very key word, right? Bind credentials to variable. Okay, so we are trying to add what? Uh, let's say just a secret text is what we are trying to hide, to, to add. So let's say this secret text, let's call this um, variable, right? Let's call this variable, we can call it docker pass. Docker pass, okay? Let's call this docker pass, okay? Credentials, we can leave that as it is, okay? So let's add. So variable is docker pass, right? Variable is a keyword, take note of that. So the username, right? So I'm not using username and password. All I want is secret text, okay? So the secret I want is that password, which I know. I don't want any other person to see it. So I enter it here. Okay, so that's my password. So here I can say, I can call this um, Docker password, right? The variable we had there was Docker pass, right? This one I'm calling it Docker password, okay? So I want us to take note of that very well, right? Description, I can decide to leave that blank. 
So I had, so I come down here to generate my pipeline scripts, okay? So when I generate pipeline script, you see something, you see credentials ID, Docker password, you see variable, Docker pass, right? So we are copying all of this into into this step, right? Into this stage. So let me click on enter. Then I paste this in here. Paste. So I want to click on this, go back, 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 back and enter. Then I want to copy this guy here from here and paste, let me cut it and paste in here. Okay, so I have this guy in here now. So, you know, password, I didn't want to disclose it, right? Now, look at this, you have Docker password, right? That's credentials ID and you have variable. So all you need now is variable, not this, not credentials ID, okay? So that is a possible mistake people could make, okay? So, I want to say dollar, open curly bracket and close it, and come and copy Docker pass, the variable, okay? And paste in here. So once you do this, <coughs> you are able to log in. Okay, once you do this, you are able to log in to Docker Hub using this username and this password, which only the system knows, nobody else knows, okay? So now that step is true, we are true with that step. So we want to do a image push to Docker Hub, right? Now remember in our, in our uh, deployment server, right? we have some ports open, right? But we, we don't need those now, right? So let's see. So to do an image push, right? All we need is to say image, sorry, sh, then you now do a Docker push. Docker push, Docker push what? What are we pushing? Come and copy this entire tag, including the username, that's the username of the Docker account, up to the build number. Copy that, right? And paste here, after Docker push. So that's the step, I done with that step. So what's the next stage? want to log into deployment server, right? Remember, we, we installed the plugin, right? SSH agent, right? We want to use SSH to log in, okay? So to log in, ordinarily, what we need to do is that we SSH into the, the server, right? So, now that we can't do that directly because we are automating, everything has to come on this place, okay? And we've installed the SSH plugin, right? SSH agent plugin. So let's see how we can make use of that here. So since we installed it, there's going to be an SSH agent option here, SS. Okay, SSH agent, okay, this is it. So with SSH agent, what are we able to do? Let's see, let's add, okay. Let's add SSH agent. So we want to be able to log into that server using username and private key, okay? So let's say ID is Ubuntu, 
you can see Ubuntu deployment or whatever. Ubuntu, right? You can say Ubuntu server or something. So username, very important. Username, the default username is Ubuntu. So we can change this to deployment. Deployment server, deployment, okay? Okay, we can call that deployment and see and an internal unique ID, which this credentials identified. Okay, yeah, so no one left blank. Okay, so I can just say deployment server there. So Ubuntu, this is very important. That's the default username, okay? Now, private key. I want to enter private key directly, okay? So I need to go and get my private key and paste it here. So I want to paste it here. So to get that, let me see if I have a notepad. Notepad, one notepad here. So let me use my notepad to go and open my, I don't know that, okay. So I click on open, print it out, copy it, and close it. Copy this, so I want to paste it here. Okay, so once I do that, I click on add paraphrase, okay? No, just add. So now that I've done this, you can see the ID. So I want to come here and click on generate pipeline scripts. You see? So this is generated. I can come here and say, there's my, Okay, it's here. I can come here and say, I'm trying to log into the deployment server, right? I'm trying to log in to this deployment server. So I can come here and paste that stuff that we generated now. Okay, so I want to back, 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 back. Back, okay, then I click on enter. So in here, what do I want to put? I want to SSH, you see this deployment server, right? SSH agent, you are going into the SSH agent. So this deployment server, so I can now say SSH, right? I want to SSH, but before then, let me put this here, my regular SH, because that's what I would have done on the command line. I can say SSH, right, dash O, right? Because this is a pipeline script, right? A pipeline, and there'll be no option to say, uh, to confirm yes or no, right? Do you want to log in? Do you want to do this, right? That interactive mode that we would have had on the terminal, right? There's no opportunity to say yes, right? So and we don't want the deployment to fail, right? Or the login to fail. So what we can do is to use this command, strict, okay, strict host key checking, right? Strict host key checking, strict host key checking. I want to set that as no. I don't want strict host key checking, right? So where do we want to log into? We want to log into Ubuntu. Ubuntu, that's the username. Ubuntu, that lives at what IP address? That lives at, let's, let's get the IP address. Ubuntu. So I want to use my private IP address because they are in the same VPC. And aside that, I don't want to come in here and start logging in and start 
having a build failure when I log in this much later. So I want to come here and this is not what I want. I want the other guy. Let's see C2, let's see dashboard, let's see running. So this is the one I want, uh, the deployment server. I want the IP address. Why is the other one not showing up anyway? Thought I had to run it. Okay, anyway. No instance running, that's okay. Oh, oh my God, brain tricks on me. <laughs> so, okay, so this is it. Um, this is what I want. I want to get this private IP address. So we are able to log in, okay? Log in to that guy. So let's log into this guy. Mm. So log in. Let's see. Okay, so let's log into this guy. At IP address. So you can see SSH to dash O street OS key check in. No, I want to log into Ubuntu at this IP address. So this deployment server that you have here has taken care of the key, key pair, right? That we needed to log in because it's already embedded somewhere in the system where we created it. Okay, so with this, we should be able to log into the server, that deployment server, then after that, the final step we want to take is to run image in deployment server. So this is the final step we want to take. Run image in the deployment server. So now, let's see. This is what we are looking for. This is what we are going to build, right? Then we'll build an image, right? Because we are trying to use a container for deployment. Okay, so now that we've done this, so we want to run image in deployment server, okay? So to run image in deployment server, so one thing we want to do first, right? Is that at this point, right? At this point, okay, let's, let's just do this, let's say, Let's say SH, right? Let's say this is what we want. Um, SH, I say Docker run, run, right? I can specify dash D, dash P. Then let's say I'm using what IP address? Let's say I'm using. 5180, right? Let's say this is the IP address I want to use, right? In that, in that deployment server and the port for Tomcat, right? It's 8080, okay? That's the port for Tomcat. Oh, I should have done this since. The port for Tomcat is 8080 and we will run through it again. The port for Tomcat is 8080. Then what else? I want to go and copy this, right? All of this as it is. Docker view, this, that, 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 that. Copy that because that's the image I'm trying to run. Okay, so I paste this. Docker build, Docker run, dash D, dash P, 5180, 8080. Okay, so I would have been satisfied right here, right? That I'm done, okay? Because I expect that the system will generate a name and all of that. 
But the thing that happens is, when I run this again, the second time, when I do a build, when there's a repeat build, right? What will happen is that this spot would have been in use and I will run into trouble. And I don't want to start thinking about figuring out how to be changing ports because we should know a particular port that we have used for a particular deployment without having to change it now and every now and then. But what can we do? What happens if before doing this Docker run, right? Before doing this Docker run, what if we can run a command, right? SH, right? We can do a, run a command that will remove the existing container, right? So to remove a container, we use Docker RM, if I'm first removing it, dash F, right? RM dash F, then I put container ID, but I don't know how to get container ID from here, right? Because it has not even been generated. But an alternative thing I could use is container name. But if you look at something, you will notice that in creating, in doing this Docker run, I didn't specify container name, right? Then that would be a problem. So I want to come here and specify a particular container name, dash dash name, right? I could do this, right? Can specify a container name and say pipeline, and say pipeline container, something like this. I might type in it. That's just name and say pipeline container. Okay. I'll say pipeline container. This is the name I want to call it. So because I now have a name here, it means that I can come up here and say pipeline container. Okay. So if there's a pipeline container there before, it will delete it so that there will be no issue with the ports that I'm using, okay? Because of conflict, because it should have deleted the container. But what happens when I'm running this for the first time? Do I want to run it once and say, oh, okay, the next time I'll go and put this command. You know, I don't want to be that clumsy. So what I want to do is that I want to introduce a component such that if the if there's an error, right? Because if there's nothing to remove, right? It results in an error. So if there's an error and there's nothing to remove, you should just ignore it, right? So we can put this. Bringing this in makes that a possibility. So now that we are done, so let's look at what we've done. Look at load. We defined the two name, we called it Maven by Demola, right? That's the two name that we called it. And we made sure that we use this Maven by Demola exactly as it is in here, right? Then we say slash bin because MVN is expected to be in bin, right? Then clean package. This will do a Maven build, right? Then lest we forget, this is the clone part, right? This is how we did our clone from GitHub, right? So the next step is to build from Docker. So we run this command, docker build dash T, right? Tech dump developers dash, tech docker build, right? Docker build, that's the file. Docker build, that's what we use. That's the name, okay? That's the name of the build. Then build number. We don't want to be specifying version name and all of that. We want the build number to be the version name. So we came here and defined build number as build underscore number, which is a system divine variable. Okay. So next stage, we want to log into Docker and we didn't want to allow our password to show. So we used with credentials, 
in the syntax, right? Pipeline syntax to generate this variable, which we passed as our password. Okay. So then we push to Docker Hub using this command. Okay, Docker push. Then we copied everything from here up to build number. Okay. Then we logged into deployment server to ensure that we, it, the system doesn't get interactive and we are unable to answer questions. So we use the strict host key checking and we set it to no, right? So, and we SSH to Ubuntu. So this is the server. Okay, so now we checked our, we did, we deleted whatever pipeline is in the system, right? And we did a Docker run, right? Docker run to build a container. Okay, so let's hope everything is okay. Let's apply and save. Now that we've done this, let's build. So clone, Maven build. Image build from Docker. Log into Docker, image push to Docker Hub, deployment, log into deployment server and run image on deployment server. So we've we have a successful build. Now let's experiment what that stuff we did. Okay, let's do another build. Just to show we won't get a failure because of conflicting use of ports. Okay, so we are good. So as much as possible, we can run multiple builds. We can run multiple builds and keep going. Our phone. 